to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second round action from Raleigh, North Carolina. A couple of Power Five schools set to tip off. The three seed NC State and the six seed Kentucky Wildcats meeting for the first time in almost 25 years. And it's for a chance to advance to the Sweet 16. The winner has a date with Iowa in Greensboro, North Carolina later this week. The Hawkeyes and Megan Gustafson punching their ticket after beating Missouri in the second round. Inside Valvano Arena and Reynolds Coliseum, I'm Melissa Lee alongside Washington Mystics head coach Mike Tebow and coach seniors are going to play a huge part in the outcome of this one. On Saturday, it was all about senior leadership for Kentucky. Senior guards Taylor Murray and Macy Morris combined for 38 points and nine rebounds in the win over Princeton, while for NC State, senior guard Kiara Leslie, whom coach Westmore calls the heart and soul of their team, led the way with 20 points and six rebounds against Maine. This should be a great battle, and the leadership will be important. It is the sixth meeting all time between the two teams. They last played in December of 1995. You got to go back that far. Our officials tonight, Brian Burnett, Mark Zentz, and Karen Lasuk. Five total Final Fours officiated amongst the three. NC State, the three seed, 27 and five on the year, 12 and four in the ACC. Kentucky, the six seed, 25 and seven on the season. 11 and five is how they finished in the Southeastern Conference. Opening tip, control by NC State. We're gonna see right off the bat, Kentucky with the man pressure overplaying, trying to make people have a tough time catching the ball. Look at the Capital One starting lineups for NC State. Going with the size, Kentucky will boast a little bit of a smaller lineup here today, which is what we saw in their first round matchup against Princeton. Well, for Kentucky, they're trying to match up. They've gone to a smaller lineup the last few games with freshman Ryan Howard playing both the four and the three. She's starting at the four, trying to get the matchups they want, trying to dictate matchups throughout the game. And there's a look at that starting five for Kentucky, brought to you by Capital One. Three point basket goes down for Macy Morris, the senior. She's a sharp shooter from outside. That is her game. She's added a lot to her game over her time at Kentucky. Worked inside, outside, and showed it all off against Princeton. Ty Crutchfield told by Westmore she would handle the basketball a lot to prevent turnovers here today. And a fight for the rebound. Penang inside. Westmore in his sixth season, they one of the four finalists for the 2019 Naismith Coach of the Year. In a season where he had not one, but four major knee injuries to key players. And all the team did since they started the season was win. Opened up to a 22-0 record to finish 27-5. And that's Kentucky and Ryan Howard, the freshman phenom with a rebound. Well, we saw right away, as soon as Kunane caught the ball on the block for North Carolina State, the double team was coming as soon as she put the ball on the floor. She's going to have to make a move or a decision a lot quicker and not turn it over. Morris again for three. Gets the miss. Taylor Murray, the senior with the basketball. Top 10 semifinalist finalists for the Naismith National Defensive Player of the Year award. Kentucky that, with another opportunity. That, that was a huge key in talking to Wes Moore yesterday. They cannot give Kentucky extra shots. Kentucky relies on them with turnovers, and if they get offensive rebounds in addition to that, it's going to be a long night. So we're going to look at turnovers. How many can Kentucky force, and what can they do with them in this game? And for NC State, it's going to be a rebounding affair. They've got to win the battle on the boards. Good pass out of the double team that time. Rushfield knocks it down, picking up where she left off in round one. Almost the same spots on the floor. Driving inside, Tatiana Wyatt, the sophomore forward from Columbus, Georgia. The referees behind us in the stands uh, were, were asking for a traveling call on that play. Kiara Leslie on the ball on the floor, jump shot, does not get the bounce, rolls out of bounds, and will stay here with NC State. Good patience by Leslie there. Matthew Mitchell in his 12th season, 15 all-time appearance in the tournament. Back in a 
after missing the tournament last year. And that's when he said they went back to the drawing board, getting back to Kentucky basketball, what got them to all the NCAA tournaments in his tenure. And that's defense, stingy, full court. I think one of the determining factors as this game goes along will be how physical the officials let this game be. D.D. Rogers, the bucket and one. The senior who has more than doubled her minutes, points per game, rebounds per game from junior to senior seasons. Well, another senior leader for NC State. They need her on the board. She's their best defensive player, will guard every position. But today, she need her on the board for those kinds of things. And there's another offensive That's board. That's just nice. Beautiful. Kiara Leslie, the graduate from Holly Springs, North Carolina. By the way, that first foul for Kentucky is assessed to Macy Moore. Morris, excuse me. Ryan Howard driving, ESPNW, freshman of the year. Ball on the ground, and Aislinn Koenig with it. Well, there's already been three or four tangle-ups under the basket on rebounding. We'll see if they clean this up or let them continue to play this physically. Clutchfield trying to drive one on one versus Macy Morris. Off the screen, and that's gonna fall for Leslie, the three. Well, so far, what we talked about in the open, the seniors stepping up on both teams to make big plays. Leslie scored 20 points, had six rebounds versus Maine, and now it's NC State in the midst of a 7 0 run. You can't cheat on that play. If you're gonna defend Macy Morris, You've got to chase her everywhere she goes. If you try to cheat on the screen, she's going to find the open area on the floor. That time she faded while Lester tried to go over the top. Five points for Morris. Got her work cut out for her today against High Crutchfield. Is really picking up where she left off at the end of the season, shooting the ball very well from the ACC tournament into the first round of the tournament, and now, so far, here tonight. Well, she was thrown in such a tough spot with Grace Hunter's injury mid-season, and she's had to carry a huge load for them. As we said, they only play six players. They've got to stay on the court, and she's got to be good. Kentucky on the other side, meanwhile, can substitute at well, and they did that against Princeton. We will expect to see that here today as that will fall for D.D. Rogers with the shot clock winding down. Well, every shot that D.D. Rogers and, and Crutchfield make on the perimeter are bonus points for NC State. Four points for the senior from Charlotte. Kentucky taking their time in the half court. Ryan Howard built for the SEC, just a freshman in the trap. Sitting back out to Morris, top of the key. She's working with seven seconds on the shot clock. Under five, just lobs it up. Good defense by Leslie. Stay, hold her ground, not go for the pump fake. Inside, and a foul. D.D. Rogers going inside. First foul assessed to Tatiana Wyatt. NC State with a 12-7 lead early on in the first. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Four fifty-five remaining in the first quarter, and it is a five-point lead for NC State in the early going. The senior is leading the way. As we welcome you courtside here inside Reynolds Coliseum. I'm Melissa Lee. Happy to be joined alongside my partner all weekend long, Coach Tebow, three-time WNBA Coach of the Year. And we talk about the seniors really needing to lead the way here in this game. Uh, and it's Kiara Leslie that is doing exactly that for NC State. She has. I mean, she set the tone on Saturday. She yeah. set it again today. And they need her. They've got this production with the, the four players that are out, particularly Grace Hunter and, and Erica Cassell, who were starters up until midseason. Now they're down to six players, and that's really tough. You see Erica sitting there on the bench. Uh, or excuse, yeah, Erica's on the bench there. And, you know, it's been tough for them sitting over there, but they've been great cheerleaders for their team, too. Yeah, four big knee injuries for NC State. Kayla Ely at the beginning of the year. She's still got two years left. Grace Hunter, knee injury. On January 6th, she's got a year left. Armani Hawkins lost her January 10th. Her career is done. Erica Cassell, they lost her February 7th. She has a year left. So all of these kids get to come back to a team that does have some youth and has gained some experience from that youth and the Lisa Kunane, and yeah. they are going to be loaded yeah, a year from now. Yeah, they got a good recruiting class coming in too, so they're excited about the future. 
Eddie Rogers converting five points on the evening. The team for NC State that is trying to get back to the Sweet 16 after getting there a year ago for the first time since 2007. And that's uh, where that recruiting class comes into play. Yes, it does. And a great showing a year ago. Want to keep the trend going. Well, one of the other things we've talked about uh, as we watched with, uh, practice with the coaches is the difference between Kentucky being able to play nine or ten people and NC State basically playing six. We've already seen nine players, I think, on the floor for Kentucky. And it's out of bounds off the Wildcats, and NC State will have it. That was Taylor Murray trying to show off a little bit of what she can do in transition and that speed that she has, just unable to convert. Here comes the, the just over half court trap, trying to get the ball out of their hands, slow down the offense. One thing Wes Moore told us he was concerned about was ball handling. So they were pretty good on that end, but concerned against a Kentucky team, and that's exactly what they practiced yesterday. Trying to get a, a score behind the, the zone defense, behind the trap. And Kentucky, you know, out here only with two starters on the court right now. Largest lead of the game for NC State. Ryan Howard, this freshman, had no problem knocking him down from outside. Yesterday, she'll try again here, gets it to go. They're going to have to get closer to her. They've got to make her try to beat them off the dribble. She got going on Saturday because she was allowed to stand and shoot three-point shots. You can't let her get her confidence with that much space. She had 15 points against Princeton, along with five rebounds. And talk about confidence, Coach. Yep. Kara Leslie, full of it. Again, just to reverse what I just said about Kentucky, uh, their offense and NC State's defense, they're going to have to do the same thing uh, at Kentucky to get up on Leslie and make her put it on the floor. Trading threes, the give and go back to Ryan and the and one as she hits the deck. Great pass and cut. She fed the post, made a cut. Leslie turned her head for a moment. And we get the and one. So Ryan Howard enters the ball into the post and right away makes a cut down the lane and Leslie's trailing, he can't keep her balance. Great finish by Howard with the contact. First foul assessed to Kiera Leslie in the game. Matthew Mitchell told us at the start of this tournament that Ryan Howard has to embrace being aggressive if they're going to make a run in this tournament. Yeah, we talked about senior leadership, but she's been the best player on the floor a lot of nights for them because of her size and athleticism and shooting ability. Quick three, Conan, yes. I said, said, I, said, yeah, I said to you yesterday, I don't know if Conan's missed a shot or two of practice yesterday, but that looked just like practice. Well, if you're looking for the scout, this is an NC State team that is running exactly what they ran in practice very well, I should say, yesterday. And it is working to perfection so far in this one as they lead it 21-13. The NC State men's team is one win from a trip to the NIT's Final Four at Madison Square Garden. Catch their quarterfinal against Lipscomb Wednesday 9 Eastern on the ESPN app and the ESPN Family Networks. And the end one on the other end. And of course, you can go to NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, Dee Dee Rogers has just been a beast around the basket. They, they worked on these baseline out of bounds plays, so they screen for her, and she rolls down the lane, and, and neither the defender on the inbounder or her own defender were close enough to keep from playing her clean. She, she's just fouling. She's getting to the free throw line. We talk about the depth for Kentucky. They're going to need it because Macy Morris just picked up her second foul with 2.26 to go here in the first. Quick trigger, Koenig again, no. That's Rogers who's fighting for the rebound, and it's picked up by Ogechi Ina Galibo. That's a big loss for, for Macy Morris if they, if they take her and put her on the bench. She's their best perimeter shooter. Ryan Howard stepping up, though, in the last couple of possessions for Kentucky. She's come down the floor the last three times looking to have the basketball in her hands. She can make a play off the dribble or off the catch. This time she gets a drive to the middle of the lane and just leans in on a step through to draw the foul. That's the first foul assessed to Aislinn Koenig. There aren't that many teams in the country going to have a 6'2 guard player who can do what she does. Put the ball on the floor, shoot threes, post up. 
And come in looking the way she does as a freshman, Coach. That's yes. what's most impressive, I think. Literally just built for the SEC. And the quick hitter inside to Alisa Kinane. That's an impressive freshman, too. Well, she's a great freshman, but Dee Dee Rogers made that play. That's her third pass to Kinane down the lane. The high-low pass has been great for them. I feel like Dee Dee Rogers might be the most improved player from her junior to senior year in the ACC. And the stats back it up. Played behind a lot of good players in her time here, and that's thrown away. And Wes Moore not happy at all. He well, NC State, they worked so much against the pressure yesterday. They said they had to swing the ball. They're facing the zone. That time, just a simple cut by Rogers and another cut to follow it up by Kunane. Ten-point lead for NC State. The three seed there in Raleigh, North Carolina against the six seed Kentucky Wildcats. Great job there by Leslie to keep Howard from touching it, coming to the top of the floor, keeping it out of her hands. Back to Roper. Seven seconds on the shot clock. She drives, lays it up high, and the rebound pulled down by Crutchfield. Under a minute to go on the first. Koenig for three. Leslie with the rebound. Another opportunity. Koenig again from outside. No. She's gotten great looks, though. You've got to keep shooting that shot. It's a wide open shot. Great find by Leslie after the offensive rebound. Koenig had the four points and three rebounds in the matchup versus Maine. Dee Dee Rogers picks up her first foul. Well, NC State already has six or seven offensive rebounds. That's a huge stat for them. They, they, they rely on that uh, to get extra shots. Had to do a double take on the rebounds already for NC State. It's 15 rebounds for the Wolfpack. And that's to just six for Kentucky. Only two turnovers for NC State, taking really good care of the basketball so far. To Keem McKinney, to Taylor Murray, flying in for the rebound. Ryan, Howard, back out to Taylor Murray. Well, right now, NC State's in a situation where they have to try to keep Ryan Howard from having the ball in her hands as many times possible. They're going zone this time to, to take, it, take it away from her. Final seconds of the first. Great screen. Howard does not get the Kentucky bounce. And the last and second foul. opportunity, and Roper. A foul. And the miss, but she is fouled. So a foul is called on the floor. It's a 10-point lead for NC State. Still in the first quarter, Aislinn Koenig assessed the foul, and Jada Roper with that last second attempt was fouled. And so they put the time back on the clock when the contact occurred. And it was point three. It was a smart play by Roper to just, uh, Roper to jump into somebody and draw the foul. You know, clock's running out, you have nothing to lose by doing it. Knocks them both down. Will end the first quarter of action and Kentucky cutting into the deficit. It's a 25 17 lead for the Wolfpack. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. Yesterday in practice, Matthew Mitchell said they could not afford to lose the battle of the boards again. That was a problem for them against Princeton on Saturday. And again, North Carolina State already with six offensive rebounds and a, and a total of seven difference in the rebounding right now. NC State has just been pounding them on the boards and getting second shots. But for Kentucky State, or for Kentucky to get back in the game, they're going to have to take that away from NC State. He also told his coach that if they're going to have a chance, he knew that they wouldn't be able to maybe perhaps match them on the boards, but they've got to be able to even up and get that differential there from a turnover perspective. And that, that hasn't happened that yet. That hasn't happened either. Just two turnovers for NC State so far in the game. Kentucky averages 21.4 turnovers forced per game. Great hustle by Murray to fight off the big players to come up with that board. 
Well, they don't have a lot of perimeter shooting on the floor right now for Kentucky. Ryan Howard's the best shooter on the floor. It's Kiki McKinney pulling the trigger from outside. Again, Macy Moore sitting the bench with two fouls. Aislinn Kone, yes, even that out from her three-point shooting. She also has two fouls in the game. The other interesting thing that, that I thought Wes Moore made, it's, you know, it's kind of a yeah, duh one, but he said one of the best ways to beat the press is don't let them score. Then you don't have to face it. So far, they've done a good job. Kiki McKinney stripping that one away on the steal. Ryan Howard, the jump shot. Tacking that one down with the speed is Taylor Murray. Well, that's two possessions in a row for Kentucky to get an extra offensive rebound. So they're getting some of the extra possessions here. They're just not able to convert. Gonna chip away at this lead here. This is Roper. Jump shot, short. Good box out by Kinane. Field off the screen, Kinane, and the turnover. Here comes Ryan Howard. Nice streaking move. Great by pass by Murray. Howard, too. Great pass. Flip it to Leslie, open in the corner for three. She's short. They missed a great opportunity right there to find Kinane wide open in the lane. She had a smaller defender on her, and they never even looked at her. Now, this is Kentucky's game, this up tempo. Wow. She makes that look so easy, that three-point shot, Ryan and, Howard. And, and when you when you look out there and you see that she's the only perimeter scorer on the floor, if you're North Carolina State, you can't even let her have a touch out there if you can help it. Now a three-point lead for NC State. They're led by as many as 10 in the first quarter. Jump shot, Leslie, yes. She's locked in. Her stroke looks really good tonight. And they came out of the out of the timeout with plays set up for her. It's a kid that's looking at becoming a top 20 pick in the WNBA draft coming up in April. Ryan Howard, the juke. Howard again for three. Not quite the look she had the last time she knocked it down. There's another offensive rebound. Roper. Well, as, soon as, we, as soon as we talked about it for NC State, Kentucky flipped the switch and now they're controlling the offensive boards. Kiki McKinney. Howard's got the hot hand. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock for Roper. The kick out, four seconds. Back to Roper, fires for three, well off the mark. Good defense again by NC State. Great reach from behind by Howard and knock it loose. Bounce pass, Kiki McKinney unable to finish for the Cats. Kinane, utilizing her size, draws the foul. And Kinane has been super aggressive. Trying to get the ball on the low, on the low post. Four-time ACC Rookie of the Week. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Regional Semifinals begins Thursday on CBS and TBS at 7 p.m. For more information on the game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. 16 points versus Maine. Nine rebounds, almost a double-double for Kinane. A freshman from Summerfield, North Carolina. Was playing 20 minutes or so early on this season. Moved into a bigger role with Cassell when she went down with an injury. And as Coach Westmore told us, that is a huge jump for a kid to go from high school to the ACC. It really is. I mean, she's seen every kind of post defense you could probably see. And, and he clearly knows that for her to make the next step, she's going to have to be a better passer out of the double team she's facing. That's going to be a big jump for her and her career development. He felt her coming out party perhaps was at 28. She scored against Notre Dame. Said it was an extremely impressive moment to see her turn that corner so quickly as a freshman. Kentucky only 8 of 25 from the floor, shooting 32%. They shot 50% from the floor, 50% from three in their first round matchup against Princeton. Shot clock winding down. Bucket for a fall for Amanda Pascal. Good cut. Good pass in the lane. One of the best things you can do as a teammate is cut to the middle of the floor when one of your teammates drives baseline. Bounce pass inside. Quick to the lane and she delivers. Good entry pass from the wing. Get the right angle to throw it on the baseline side. Eight points already for the freshman. Open one. And the 
Pierce by Wyatt. Another offensive rebound for Kentucky. Roper fires. Back iron. Leslie. Tempo. That is the way Kentucky likes it. NC State does play Syracuse, a team that likes to do that full court pressure, but they do back into a 2-3 zone. And the bounce will fall for Taylor Murray. Those are the kind of shots she made in the fourth quarter the other day against Princeton. The mid-range pull-up off the dribble. That's her most, that's her favorite comfort zone area, right in the middle of the floor like that. And a whistle, they're gonna call a traveling violation on Elisa Kanane. That is the fifth turnover for NC State. They still hold on to the lead, 31-26. Start of this quarter, Kentucky has reasserted themselves in the game, particularly taking care of the basketball and getting on the offensive boards. They've gotten drives down in the paint, nice passes. They've gotten offensive boards for kickouts, nice swing of the ball. Taylor Murray getting jump shots in the lane. Murray and Roper have done a really nice job of either knocking down shots or finding teammates in this little mini run that they have. Kentucky shooting 34% for the game. NC State shooting 50% right now. This is with Mason Morris for Kentucky on the bench with the two fouls, and Koenig on the bench for NC State also with two fouls. And Koenig back in the game, excuse me, after the break. Good sit some time as we get a traveling violation called against Ryan Howard. That is the first turnover yeah, for Kentucky. Exactly. But the one concern I would have if I were NC State defensively right now is they're giving up a lot of middle penetration on pick and rolls. And I know they're supposed to show and help, but the ball is getting a little bit deeper than they want it to. Leslie inside. And Dee Dee Rogers. Swing it out. Three pointer all the way. Caleb Jones, the sophomore. That's a really nice swing of the ball by Kunane. Not known for her passing. She's made a couple tonight. Ryan Howard from the elbow. Right Knocks there is it what down. I'm talking about. They're, they're, they're letting Howard get to the middle of the floor. They're letting Taylor Murray get into the sweet spot at the foul line. They've got to show and make them turn back a little bit. They're getting too deep to get a wide open jump shot. Howard leading all scores with 13. And the spin, a little English, too much on the ball for Koenig. Uh, Howard's wide there open. There you go. She's so wide open. I don't know how you can leave the best player on the court that wide open. That's your ESPNW National Freshman of the Year, SEC Freshman of the Year, All-SEC First Teamer, AP Newcomer of the Year. Kanane got away with a walk there, too. Fans here at NC State, not fans. <laughs> <laughs> officials here tonight. It's a good thing they all don't have whistles. <laughs> Brian Burnett, Mark Zanson, Karen Masuk. Our officials, five final fours officiated between the three. Again, Howard, too much space. Wide open. Make somebody else shoot the ball. 15 points for the freshman. Four point lead for NC State. Leslie, right into the hands. Uh, Tatiana Wyatt. And again, Howard came down wide open. Transition defense looks tired for North Carolina State. We've been going at a pretty good clip here in the first quarter, sort of in the first quarter, beginning the second quarter. Again, it's a very short bench for NC State with all their knee injuries, four of them this season. Shot clock running down. They got to make something happen pretty quickly here. Five seconds to go. Leslie with the ball in her hand. Two defenders in front of her. An offensive rebound was there for D.B. Rogers, and she draws the foul. Coming up.
up in the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Maria, Andy, Rebecca will look at games underway tonight. Notre Dame, Michigan State, UCLA, Maryland, South Dakota State, and Syracuse. How can you pick just one to watch? I try to watch them all. That's why you have the ESPN yep. out, right, Coach? I do. And we've been utilizing it all weekend long. <laughs> all weekend long. <laughs> when there were four games, I had either the split screen going or I had the phone and the computer and the iPad. You know how to work it, Coach, because there's a lot of scouting in your, <laughs> not only in your future, but in your current present with the draft coming up for the WNBA. Yeah, the whole staff's been out of games all the last couple of weeks. One side to Kane loses the basketball. Pascal going up amongst the trees. Pulled down by Leslie on the rebound. She loses the basketball. The team holds on her. Blair Green. step to come down. It was a great look up the floor. They were trying to beat the 10 second clock. The defender was close. Yeah. Call that one either way. Second foul assessed to D.D. Rogers here tonight. If the fans weren't wild up before, they are oh wild boy. up now. Three back iron. Another offensive rebound, and it's been the little guard, Justin Hushley. 24 rebounds for NC State, 18 for Kentucky. Taylor okay, Murray hits the deck. Blair Green again for three. No. And they'll hold it for one shot, I assume. <laughs> Hutchfield with a ball in her hand. Been pretty good at handling the basketball here today. Leslie, two seconds to go inside to Kinane, and Kinane unable to convert on the shot inside. A five-point lead for NC State on top of the six seed Kentucky Wildcats. After the break, it's the Northwestern Mutual halftime report. Maria, Andy, and Rebecca. You're watching the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Welcome inside the studio, Maria Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers. And let's break down what we've seen so far through the first half of play in uh, College Park, Maryland, Coach. Well, two teams, Kentucky and North Carolina State, both hang their hat on the defensive end of the floor. They're, they're really good defensively, and it has shown up in this game. But North Carolina State yep. has gotten the better of Kentucky in that regard. NC State offensively been very efficient. Kiara Lewis scoring from the perimeter, stretching their defense. Uh, but also been able to run a little bit, get the ball inside to their bigs. Kentucky's bigs do not match up well with NC State on the inside. Kentucky thrives off of turning teams over, and they were able to turn NC State over eight times, but only five points off of those turnovers. They struggled to score early. Fortunately, they still have Ryan Howard, who had 15 She's in that good. first half. <laughs> yeah, they're about fourth in the nation um, in assist to turnovers. And right now, I'm just glad that they both let me get away with saying the game was in College Park, Maryland, guys. Raleigh, North Carolina, same difference. See, right? uh, now you know how much attention we pay to you. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't hear me at all. And we'll see a much cleaner second half. Either way, we thank you for joining us here in the studio in the Wolfpack. They're in Raleigh, North Carolina with the lead. Renewed. This halftime report is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. presented by Capital One. The number three seed, North Carolina State Wolfpack, on top of the six seed, Kentucky Wildcats by five at the half. A spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. We welcome you back inside Reynolds Coliseum alongside three-time WNBA Coach of the Year, Mike Tebow. I'm Melissa Lee. And Kentucky, they were down by as many as 10 in this game. They've cut the deficit to five, courtesy of their freshman phenom, Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard has been great, particularly in the second quarter. She's six for 13 from the floor. Yeah. The rest of their team is six for 25, and particularly with Macy Moore sitting on the bench for 14 minutes with foul trouble in the first half. They've needed every one of her points. If I'm NC State, though, 
and I know that Macy Morris is sitting on the bench. I gotta pay a lot of attention to Ryan Howard. She's gotten free reign here in the second quarter. She's gotten to the lane, she's gotten and one, she's had wide open walk up threes. You gotta guard her first. Even if it takes two people to stop her, you gotta get up and make her give the ball up to somebody else. Leads all scorers with 15 points. She also has three rebounds to add to her stat line. So the score scoop here tonight, NC State, one of the most efficient shooting teams in the country. Why are they ahead? Well, they're shooting pretty darn good here tonight, 48%. 48%, and, and you have the other end of it with, with Kentucky shooting 32%, but staying in the game with forcing turnovers. They forced eight, and they've gotten offensive rebounds. The shot difference, 38 to 27, is huge. So what are we playing for? We're playing for a spot in the Sweet 16, the trip to Greensboro, North Carolina, and a date with Iowa. We put away Missouri yesterday in a hard-fought battle. Megan Gustafson really turned it on. She was terrific, as she's been all year. I mean, the ESPN Player of the Year led the country in scoring. She's She's been a one-man show inside. Ready to carry that on into Greensboro, North Carolina. Macy Morris back in the lineup for Kentucky after sitting most of the first half with the two fouls. Koenig also with two fouls for NC State. We well, see the kind of pressure that Kentucky puts on. They've barely got the ball in bounds to start the half. Leslie for three. Good start, NC State. That's how she started the first half, how she started the second half. Katie does not want her career to end anytime soon. Brown, there, there's the much more pressure right there. So putting a body early on on Ryan Howard. Thought about pulling the trigger. Under 10 seconds to shoot. They see Morris from the free throw line. Indecision there by NC State whether to switch or not switch, and they didn't either. And that's the difference of having a Macy Morris back in the ball game. Yes, it is. Two scores and a pick and roll. Would have been an easy switch for Leslie and, and Rogers on that play. The Leslie Pascal matchup is really interesting because Pascal is so much smaller than Leslie that she's done a good job of trying to keep her from catching the ball. You see Wes Moore a little frustrated on the sideline and even more frustrated after the empty possession. Matthew Mitchell told us yesterday their defense is going to have to start 30 feet away from the basket. As Morris driving. Her shot altered by Penain. Ball stolen away on the other side by Taylor Murray. That's just an awareness by Koenig. I don't know if her teammates were yelling, but all the fans were yelling. Wide open look for Ryan Howard, and she drains it. Again, wide open. Wow. I guarantee you that six weeks ago, she would have never thought about taking that shot. Kid is feeling confident with yep. her stroke here every, as of late at the right time. Every game you see her get a little bit more confident. Just a sophomore, Crutchfield. She's got six today. Turnaround shot up, rims up for Wyatt. Those were the shots that Kentucky was getting to fall against Princeton in round one. Three-pointer, open look for Kinane. And Taylor Murray hit the deck hard as she is still down on the other end. And now we've got the whistle. She took a hard fall. Wow. She got kind of her legs caught out from under her in the middle of the rebound scrum there. Macy Morris. One of the first ones over to check on her teammate, both seniors on this team. They've been through a lot. I don't even want to speculate without seeing the replay. Let's see if we can get a look at this. She's up in midair. Yep, feet taken out from under. She lands on her tailbone, left hip. That hurts just watching. Mm. Not, not a lot of padding there either. No. When I try to walk it off, she'll head over to the bench. That's a tough kid who's been through a lot, as I mentioned, with this team. 
they kind of got away from what Kentucky does best in terms of their stifling defense. As, as Matthew Mitchell was honest with us and said, look, I was trying to protect our NCAA tournament streak yep. last year. And they finished 15 and 17, 6 and 10 in the SEC by getting away from the defense. So he sat down, Taylor Murray, and he sat down Macy Morris at the beginning of the year and said, we got to get back to the basics, guys, and that's our defense. And as Taylor told us yesterday, that's why I came to Kentucky in Absolutely. the first place. That's how we played my freshman year. They tried to compensate for injuries and everything else, but they got away from who they were. Murray will take a seat on the bench. Roper back in the game. Ryan Howard, D.D. Rogers, one-on-one. -on -one. Open look for Pascal. Another offensive board. You can win a lot of games shooting a lower percentage if you defend and you get extra possessions through turnovers or rebounds. And they're getting them at both ends right now. They're, they're turning NC State over and they're getting on the offensive boards. Nine turnovers for NC State to Kentucky's one. Outside again to Pascal, the other corner. Fight for the basketball, jump ball. Koenig made the mistake there trying to dribble it while she was rebounding. She just needed to get possession of the ball first. Basketball will stay on this end with Kentucky. And Taylor Murray checks back into the game for Pascal. If I'm Kentucky and as good as, as Ryan Howard and Macy Morris are, I think I'd run a lot of those pick and rolls with them involved and make NC State have to make a decision how to play it. Oh, the pass. That was intercepted by Koenig. And the bump. NC State might do well to come and set a backcourt pick right here to get Koenig some freedom to bring the ball up. They're allowing Taylor Murray to just pick up Koenig full court the whole time. First foul assessed to Taylor Murray today. Peter Rogers looking for some help. Goes high to Kinane. Ball stripped away. Kinane gets it back to a wide open. Leslie for three. I swear, Crutchfield and Leslie must have little X's on the left wing for where they're taking shots from. Macy Morris answers on the other end. Great answer. They needed that shot right there. Leslie with 16 points. Morris with 10. Four triples today for Kiara Leslie. Driving. Crutchfield, no. They're going to call the offensive foul. Tatiana Wyatt stood her ground just outside the circle. Tenth turnover for the Wolfpack. And now we're starting to creep up into the numbers that Kentucky likes. Yes, they, they, they've upped the pressure. And you see, you know, when you're only playing with six players, the fatigue part sets in, too. You've got to be tough enough to play through all the pressure. It's an open look. And oh my, that's an a easy bonus basket bucket. for that's, Wyatt. That's not a normal shot for her. She's a 26, 27% three point shooter for the season. Like this matchup of Howard and Leslie, one perhaps foreshadowing for the future in the WNBA. Leslie, the runner, no. And Dee Rogers is there with the offensive rebound. Trying to find Kanane on the block. Leslie had an opportunity to get it there. High to Kanane, and she is fouled. The freshman doing a lot of work here tonight. Well, if you're Kentucky, you expect to get points from Tiatiana Wyatt in the paint. You don't expect them in the, in the three-point line, but she knocks it down to get Kentucky rolling again. Kentucky continuing to chip away at this NC State lead, down by just three. And Coach Tebow, you said if they can run this pick and roll action all night, they'll be in a good place. Well, if you want to get Macy Morris going right away to start the half, put her with the other team, with her best teammate as far as running a play. They run pick and roll here. Would have been an easy switch for Leslie and Rogers, but they both point and do nothing. And she comes off wide open. They can't decide whether they're going to switch, stay, help. That's going to be an effective play until they stop it. 
Right now, both teams shooting 50% here in the third quarter of play. And it's Kanane at the free throw line. Nine points, 12 rebounds, and four assists for the freshman tonight. That's been the story of this, the last third of the season for her. I, I just every week she gets better. Very impressive player. Her and Crutchfield's development has been a key to their maintaining the edge that they have gotten early in the year. So then when you think of what they've been able to do this year and in their growth and then what they're getting back next year, including the recruiting class incoming, it's a scary thought <laughs> if you're well, an opposing team. Play again. In the ACC. Morris. She got, a good look. This time. she got a good look. She did. Crutchfield, her ball handling has been very good here today. Quick trigger, Leslie, and Dee Dee Rogers right there with the rebound. Kadang comes out. Set the screen, high hands to her. They flip it out, Leslie was open, gave it up to Koenig. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock for Leslie. Tried to go high hands to Kanane. Rogers, the kick out to Crutchfield for a look. Leslie, the offensive rebound and the finish. Kanane keep the, kept that alive. She was boxed out by two people. Used her link to keep it alive in the air, and Leslie was opportunistic to come and grab that underneath the basket. That's the kid Westmore calls a godsend for what she's been able to do during her time at NC State. And Matthew Mitchell wants a timeout as the Wolfpack have extended their lead once again here at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. 321 remaining in the third, seven point lead for NC State. And that last bucket is worth a second look. It is, you know, sometimes when a coach calls a play, players try too hard to run the play. They have Kunane on the block, that's what they're looking for, but she's being fronted by a small player and got backside help. Leslie tries to force it in. But after that, the hustle takes over. Great rebound by Rogers. Another another offensive rebound. Kunane with three people around her keeps it alive. Leslie gets the land on just effort plays by their post players. And oh, by the way, Kunane, the freshman, a double-double. Career-high 13 rebounds here tonight. And the answer on the other end for Kentucky, Tatiana Wyatt with the bucket. She's improved a lot also. I had to look early on to see what year in school she was last week. And she's a sophomore. She's only going to get better. Her confidence level is growing. Yes, kid who's rounding out her game. Put a lot of hard work into it. Really a stretch four, kind of moved her out of position this season. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock here for Leslie. Working, firing. As a coach, you gotta live with that play. That's a good play. She couldn't, didn't have the post up. She drove right to the middle of the foul line and got a good look. Just didn't go in. Sometimes you miss shots that are good plays. It's out of bounds. Kentucky will have it. Last touch by Kone. You know, a lot of times when we we'll go back and assess our team, we try to tell our players, did you get a good shot? If you got a good shot, then you're happy. They don't all go in. Macy Morris, back outside. We saw her drive a lot against Princeton, just like that, the kick out. Senior to senior. The give and go back to Morris. Nice move. Offensive board is there. Tatiana Wyatt, and she is unable to convert. That's where Kane needs to get in the weight room this summer. Kanae, nice, nice patience. That's great patience. Well said. <laughs> These are big possessions in the quarter right here from Kentucky. You don't want to lose contact. That's a good switch by Rogers on that one. Now she's got to stay up on Howard. She's going to use another one. Kanane's got to be up. Six seconds on the shot clock, and Howard, ice cold veins. Well, Alyssa Kanane's going to have to learn as a post player, when another team has a great shooter, you can't play 10 feet off the post player that's setting the screen. You've got to be up to the screen to deny that shot. Point lead for NC State. Kentucky led this one for about a minute and a half. 
That's it. It's been all NC State in this one so far, and it's been Kentucky working from behind. Under a minute to go in the corner. Step back, Howard No. And a fight for the rebound. And that's Kiki McKinney. NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here on ESPN with more second round matchups. Check your local listings for the game in your area and remember that all are streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, they have a chance for two for one here if they want to do it. You'd like to get this shot right around the 40 second mark. That was just the first foul assessed to Kiki McKinney here today as the ball rolls out of bounds. We'll stay with NC State with 43.5 to go in the quarter. They may have taken that option away from themselves now. D.D. <laughs> Rogers trying to lay it in through traffic. Calling the hell ball. Call it will stay here. Well, NC State now can hold the, the ball for the last shot of the quarter if they want. 27.8 to go. Pick trigger coming. They didn't. <laughs> but they didn't. That would have been one if it didn't go in. Coach wouldn't have been too happy. It's a second assess to Leslie. 4.6 to go in the quarter. Catch and shoot. Roper. Got it. To cap off the quarter, Jada Roper with a big three. Well, Jada Roper was just trying to get a shot off before the clock, and she knocks down a three and keeps Kentucky Wildcats in contact, 53-48 North Carolina State as we go to the fourth quarter. Time for a studio update. South Dakota State trying to become the first ever Summit League team to advance to the Sweet 16, but Kiera Lewis with the steal and the score, forcing the Jackrabbits to call a timeout. Right now, the Orange are up two in the Carrier Dome, and the fans love it. Notre Dame is rolling as the one seed. Enrique Agumawale already 23 points in that one, and we'll keep you up to date on the close one between UCLA and Maryland. We're expecting a sensational finish here down the stretch. Start of the fourth quarter between NC State, the three seed, and the six seed Kentucky Wildcats. And a look at the story of the score. You see the field goal shooting percentage between the two. Not too much of a differential there, but the turnovers. The turnovers, I mean, 11 to 2. It's what Kentucky does to teams. And I think the bonus for Kentucky is they haven't turned it over themselves at all tonight. NC State has kept pace by getting some offensive boards and staying in the game, and they shot the ball better from the three-point line. But it's going to go right down to the wire because both teams have had just enough of a surge to keep contact when it's starting to get away from them. And there's another turnover for Kentucky. Traveling violation called on Macy Morris. The third for the Wildcats. You know right about now, sometime soon, Taylor Murray's going to try to get another steal, get a little jump start for their team. And she hits the deck again. It's the second time here tonight. What? I don't know what I don't know what they just called. She pointed at two different people. Uh, they're calling an offensive foul on Kunane for a trip. So run it. They're running a high high post area screen, a horn screen. Uh, that's that's a bad call. I'm sorry, but she just stepped down on Kunane's foot. There was no trip there at all. Her foot was on the floor, not extended. Oh. 
Hunter the rebound. Adding to her double-double already tonight. Yeah. NC State men's team is one win from a trip to the NIT's Final Four at Madison Square Garden. Heads their quarterfinal against Lipscomb Wednesday at 9 Eastern on the ESPN app. And the ESPN family of networks. That is the men's coach Kevin Keats in his second season at NC State trying to do some good things. Try to get to Madison Square Garden. The foul assessed to Tatiana Wyatt on this end. That is her third. Knocked out of bounds by Ryan Howard. She's done a better job shutting down Howard in this half, Coach. Yeah, they've paid more attention to her. They've switched a couple times. The one time she got wide open is when they ran her off the nades. Uh, player. Oh, nice baseline drive. That's a tough angle to get yourself back out in front of the backboard to use the square. Very tough angle. Ryan Howard with an open look from the elbow. Rebound, D.D. Rogers. NC State dodged the bullet on that one. Rogers gambled and didn't come up with the steal. Rogers eight and eight. Eight on the boards, eight points. These two power five teams haven't played since 1995 as Rogers draws the foul. But these two head coaches go way back. Way back. Starting up with the coaching ranks in the state of Tennessee. It was Wes Moore who was working at Chattanooga. And it was a little grad assistant at Tennessee <laughs> named Matthew Mitchell that was called up one day to help Coach Moore lay some sod at his house. Yeah, Matthew told us, he said, <laughs> I needed extra money. When you're grad assistant, you're not making any money. And there was a job open, it happened to be at Coach Wes Moore's house, so he said, we sodded the lawn together. That's how they started their friendship. A lot of smiles between the two remembering that time. Yeah. A lot of stuff in the conversation I'm sure they <laughs> cannot repeat to us. Yeah, I'm sure there was. <laughs> and Matthew Mitchell said that was just fantastic for him as an up-and-comer to be able to talk to a guy in the coaching ranks doing a fantastic job. Better job right there by Cunane to get out and contest. Open look. For keeping and a the great Kings. box out by Rogers. The Kings had a tough day. She missed the last two games of the tournament for Kentucky with injury. She scores here today, and Leslie gets the bounce and run. Great angle of turning the corner. She just had just a small amount of room to get an angle, and she turns it. Gets the ball on the left wing. Clock's running down, penetrates, leans in, and one. So the grad, Leslie, leading the way with 22 points in this one. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Capital One rewarding performance, and it's going to go to the grad, Kiara Leslie. She's done just about everything to extend this back out to a 10-point lead for NC State with 7.38 to go inside and outside. The kid has 22 points, 10 rebounds, and an assist to her stat line. She has stayed out of foul trouble, which was a concern heading into this one, has kept her legs fresh, and that is a kid that we expect will go in the top 20 in a WNBA draft. And if you watch this game, you see why. See why. She's she's really had a terrific game. Put her, her, her prints are all over this game. The both ends of the floor. She's had tough matchups. She's guarded Howard for part of the game. Kentucky having a tough go in the fourth. They have not scored in this quarter. The other thing that's hurt Kentucky, that's the 13th free throw for NC State, while Kentucky only has taken four. NC State has worked hard. They're second in the country in fewest fouls. It's carried over tonight. 
which was a stat that actually surprised Wes Moore because he said they didn't do so well on that end in the ACC tournament, but certainly a stat that he is proud of. Yeah, that, you know, it's been a point of emphasis. He just felt like, you know, sometimes when you have a streak of two or three games where you don't do anything right that you have as a focus, it feels like you've never done it right. The fact of the matter is they really have other than those couple games. Macy Morris, that is her fourth foul. And you say, you know, like, we would think that way, Coach. Only people that think that way, Coach, are coaches. <laughs> you know, it's a big thing. You can win a lot of games if you if you win a couple of the categories. Turnovers, rebounds, and free throws. You win two of those categories, you have a chance every night. Well, Kentucky might be winning the battle in turnovers. 12-3. to three. Forced NC State into the 12, but NC State is really winning the battle on the boards, 41 to 25. Yep, they've stayed consistent throughout the game. They had a bad patch at the start of the second quarter, giving up offensive boards to Kentucky, but they've kind of righted the ship in that regard. They've gotten to the free, free throw line because of it, because they've controlled the boards. Tatiana Wyatt just picked up her fourth foul. And when you've turned it over like you have against Kentucky, getting the extra boards, I mean, it's almost inconceivable right now that Kentucky has taken 13 more shots than North Carolina State, and North Carolina State's made more field goals. You win games doing that. Last lead for Kentucky was at the very beginning of this game when it was 8-5. to five. That's it. Back into this one. Taylor Murray, AC Morris fires. Shot clock winding down. Ryan Howard with a big rebound. Another opportunity. Macy Morris open. Best time to get a three point shot is off an offensive rebound. They chase it down. Everybody collapses to the paint. Macy Morris spotting up behind the three point line, wide open. The ball taken right out of her hands from Ryan Howard. I don't think even think she saw Ryan Howard. It was a clean takeaway. Howard looking back over to the bench. Matthew Mitchell is going to take a drive. Here she goes to kick out. Shot. Jada Roper won't fall. And Ryan Howard hits the deck. Roper was, uh, I think, on the baseline as she touched the ball. NC State basketball. The rest of the NC State team needs to be a little bit more alert. The pressure's not going to go away. You've got to be ready to have an extra ball handler. Sarah Leslie draws the contact. That's a tough matchup physically for Macy Morris. Leslie has had seven games of 20 plus points or more. You can make that eight tonight. She's got 23 on the evening. And Leslie and, and Morris are about the same height, but there's a whole big difference in the physicalness of the bodies. And Leslie used that to her advantage on that play. Every team's goal is to make it to Tampa Bay, where coverage of the women's Final Four begins Friday, April 5th. At 6.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app, and you better believe myself, Coach T-Ball, will be watching as many games as possible, courtesy of the ESPN app. 5.26 to go in the game. It's been Kentucky working from behind since the get-go. Good patience by Rodgers on that play to wait for a guard to come get it. Steel. Touchfield telegraphed that one. Moore saw it all the way down the floor. Jada Roper picks it back out. Morris driving this time high off the glass and gets the big blue bounce. The biggest improvement in her game from her freshman year to now is being able to put the ball on the floor to make a play. That's a kid will probably go third round in the WNBA. Somebody will certainly pick her up. She's able to do so much. And she's got a quiet confidence about her. She's not a very vocal kid. 
Leslie, ball punched out and a whistle. And it's tough because for about the last two and a half minutes, we've been shooting the bonus here for NC State. So, and then and, and NC State's only got one team foul. They can afford to be a little bit aggressive right now where Kentucky cannot. That is the third foul assessed to Taylor Murray. And Leslie is a 71% free throw shooter, just has the all around game. Transferred in from Maryland, coming in from high school, was an athlete first, an OK shooter, got into the yep. gym and worked really hard to be the shooter she is today. Again, I think they need to get the ball back in the hands of Howard Morris right here. Or let Murray turn the corner. Now Howard's got a chance to drive it here. Now we're driving. Dee Dee Rogers hits the deck. And now a foul is called. The name walked under her as she was shooting it. That's, that's, that's a very easy call for the officials. I know the fans aren't happy, but it's an easy call. Now the second foul assessed to Kinane. Howard is 68% free throw shooter. This is the first. Next sports hitter tonight after the NCAA women's second round matchups with John Anderson and Steve Levy. Rebecca Lobo joins the show to break down the tournament's best so far. Plenty to choose from. Plus, Russell Westbrook's quest for an incredible third straight triple-double season and Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest mock draft. It's coming up Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Rosalie alongside three-time WNBA Coach of the Year Mike Tebow. What's been a fun Power 5 matchup? ACC and the SEC, seven teams in the tournament for the Southeastern Conference, eight in the ACC. They used up a lot of time trying to get organized. They're going to have to make something out of nothing right now. Eight seconds on the shot clock here. And nobody home on the pass by Didi Rogers. 15th turnover for NC State. And she tried to thread the needle on that one, but Kunane was locked up in traffic, couldn't get anywhere near it. Only three turnovers for Kentucky. But again, it's the advantage on the glass for NC State that's kept them in the lead in this one. 43 to 29. Here comes Leslie. Good patience. Jermaine air melts it. Out of bounds, last touch from NC State. That's a somewhat uncomfortable spot for post players to catch the ball just a step or two inside the foul line when there's traffic around them. She usually usually catches it a lot deeper in the paint. And she hasn't learned yet how to navigate the link. And in trying to inbounds the ball, Ryan Howard stepped on the line, stepped in bounds. She pump faked herself on that one. Big turnover for Kentucky and now NC State Gets the bucket, excuse me, the ball underneath their bucket with 30 seconds on the shot clock. 314. And we got a timeout called by Matthew Mitchell and the Kentucky Wildcats. We're down in this game by nine. 314 to go in the fourth with a, an opportunity to advance to the C16 on the line. It seems to me right now, I mean, if you're if you're Kentucky. You have to figure out a way to get the ball in the hands of your best players on the next four or five possessions to give yourself the best opportunity, whether that's through a pick and roll or whether it's an ISO for Howard but, or running a stagger screen like they have in their offense for Macy Morris. Those players, Taylor Murray, Ryan Howard, and Macy Morris have got to be the shooters down the stretch. they got to get stops here, too. Right now, NC State has an opportunity to run more time off the clock on this possession. I'll be interested to see if Kentucky traps them on the first or second pass. Well, Kentucky's been in this position before against an ACC opponent in Louisville. A foul and one. Great little curl cut by Koenig. Fisher pointed to the circle. The defender was in the circle. Early on in the season in December. Inbound take a look at the last bucket. Nice little cut. Rogers sets a great screen for Koenig to curl down the lane. Kentucky battled Louisville. Louisville really extended their lead in that one. And in the final minutes, Kentucky came back to pull it. 
to within five. It was to within three in the final minutes of that game. And there's a sense of urgency, yeah. obviously, for Kentucky right now. They need a little bit right now. Another loose possession for NC State. Smartly called timeout. So here's what we're playing for, an opportunity to punch a ticket to the Sweet 16. It would be back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances for NC State if they can keep this lead. And for Kentucky, they did not go to the tournament at all last year, I'm trying to take that bad taste out of their mouths and try to take this as deep as they can this season. And a date with Iowa, the two seed, who has been very impressive so far in the opening rounds of this tournament. I'll be interested to see that other game after us tonight, Baylor and California. The big post players in the lane in that one. Christina Nigway for Cal. You've got Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox for Baylor. It's going to be a war in the post right now tonight. Three minutes to go. Koenig needs some help. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Leslie pulls back. And another and offensive rebound. Koenig gets it right back. Crutchfield from the corner. Westmore is beside himself. He's both mad and happy at the same time. He was beside himself when she shot the ball and thrilled when it went in. Morris tries to answer, and she does. Kentucky needs to stop right now. And a timeout called. Dee Dee Rogers was having some trouble on that inbound play. Well, again, she had two teammates running away from her. Well, Kiara Leslie obviously has been the story for us. She's been, we talked about her at the open, the senior leadership. She's knocked down three. She's gone to the basket. She's gotten to the free throw line. She's been almost everywhere on the court. They've needed every point from her. 26 points and still counting. 2.09 to go, and it's a 68-57, 11-point lead now. If you're Matthew Mitchell, you don't have a lot of time at this point. No, he's going to be back to press in full court. They're going to be trapping. I would, I would expect a lot more aggressive press right now. They're going to need an extra inbounder right here for uh, NC State to get the ball in. They have Leslie coming up, but they're going to have to get Crutchfield or Ace Koenig up there to catch the ball. Here comes the trap. Crutchfield down the sideline. Dee Dee Rogers, really a one-on-one -on -one look versus Howard. Trying to use enough clock right here. Try to get a good shot under 10 seconds. They've been so efficient shooting this season. And again in this game, NC State. Six seconds on the shot clock for Leslie. And Taylor Murray. Unable to capture the rebound, sends it out of bounds, and NC State will have the basketball. That's four times in the last two minutes that NC State's gotten an offensive rebound or there's been a violation by Kentucky where the ball has stayed at this end of the floor. Again, good job by Rodgers to get it out, get it in the guard's hand. And that's actually a good foul right now. Kentucky has to foul. And fouling Rodgers is a little bit better option than it is fouling Leslie or Koenig. Yeah, Rodgers is a 59% free throw shooter on this season. Leslie, as you mentioned, a 71% shooter. Nice confidence stepping up. Good rotation. Westmore said a lot of kids would have transferred out, playing behind Chelsea Nelson. Akila Mays a year ago. She's been huge for this team, scoring and on the boards, up to minutes, up to everything in terms of her percentages across the stat sheet. And she's clearly their best defensive player. They let her switch on the guards. They let her guard big posts. Morris on the runner. Now gets squared up on that one. And a quick foul on Crutchfield. 
She tries to take it down the sideline. She's been an excellent ball handler here today, Coach. Yes, she has. She's been, I, I've just been amazed by the growth she's had in the last two months. I was here earlier in the season to watch them play Notre Dame. They've just come off a huge win against Syracuse and all their pressure. And after she survived that Syracuse game, I think her confidence has grown because they pressed her the entire game. Yeah. And I think that, you know, once she got through that, she said, well, I can do that. Nobody's going to press me harder than they did. And this is, it's been a great mental thing for her. Yeah, kid who's still working with her running some point guard. Westmore admits he's been tough on her at times, but it's made her a better player. And she has shown up here in the postseason. She's been great. And as long as they keep making free throws, they have the game under control. 11 points for Crutchfield. And that shot altered. Howard airmails it. Macy Morris with 18 points, the senior who has been through a lot in her time at Kentucky, really has put together an all-around game. Came in as a shooter, and you see Taylor Murray, and these kids have really been the heart and soul of this Kentucky team the past four years. They have. They've experienced success in getting to the tournament three out of their four years. Last year was the first time they didn't. But they've gotten back to who they are. And we expect we'll see both playing at the next level. Matthew Mitchell is uh, giving it up here. Tell his kids just to back off, don't foul anymore. So Kentucky will just let the time wind down. Four seconds on the shot clock. Koenig will take an opportunity there. And now Kentucky basketball. Got a second differential between game clock and shot clock. Another opportunity here, and Ryan Howard, the freshman who's been sensational this season, will come back. And it's the two seniors, Kentucky Wildcats for Macy Morris, Taylor Murray, who will end their careers with the blue uniform here tonight. I don't. I think somebody called timeout. I think they were trying to sub for somebody over here on the NC State sideline. And that's the reason for the stoppage of play. Just a 20-second timeout, just a sub. Well, the substitution here is to get Kiara Leslie out of the game so she can get the final ovation from the NC State fans. Dee Dee Rogers, both seniors. Their careers will continue in back-to-back -back seasons in the Sweet 16. And they won't have to go far to play no, either. No, they will not. Just down the road. Down the road to Greensboro. And they will take on Iowa. And what a fantastic matchup that will be. Yeah, that'll be a test of wills. A young freshman center like Kunane having to guard um, the Iowa Post players. Megan Gustafson is a load. And that will do it. 72 to 57. NC State, the Wolfpack are going dancing for the Sweet 16 and back-to-back -back seasons. So Kiera Leslie was the star, 26 points, 10 rebounds in this one. Once again, our final score, NC State 72, Kentucky 57. Now let's send you to the studio. Here is Maria Taylor. All right.